Yes, I'm going to start uh, just uh, looking at outline. Okay, we, the first uh, is the introduction about the Central American and how it affects for the climate change. The next point is about the sediment deposit that we did a bathymetric uh, survey in the lake in uh, 2012. And then with that data, we have uh, the chance to estimate the life expectancy of the lake. And then uh, we are going to see how the measure we are taking in order to adapt some of the climate change. Uh, and finally, we're going to have a discussion about the vulnerability of the, that we are going to have. Just, if you don't know, especially some of you, Guatemala is a... Uh, uh, we have uh, like neighborhood Mexico, Belize, Honduras, and Salvador. We are in the Central America. And the case that we are going to study is right here. And it's very important to point out that uh, Guatemala City is uh, exactly in the, in the continental divide between the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. So we are right in the, in the top of the two big waters. One of the, the that we we start to see yesterday with the Jose presentation that in general Central America is a, is one of the region in the world that have a high vulnerability about the change of the uh, the high events and uh, uh, in this case we are going to see that the tropical tournament they call Agata, Agata in, in 20 uh, in, uh, in 2010 the year 2010 that have in the in May in, in, in the region especially in our country that make a big effect in the in the lake in this case that we are going to see and some of the you can see here the lake, okay? The lake is about 3,500 3, feet, and the Guatemala City is about 5,000 feet. Okay, thank you. And so Guatemala City is uh, above the, the lake, so anything that we do regarding with the, the use of land had to a big impact in the lake like we are going to see. And uh, like they say, uh, about 50% of the population of the Guatemala City is going for, to the lake, and the other 50% going to another watershed. And this is some of the, the map of the land use in the, in the 19, 1972. You can see the, the red is just the urban area. And 40 years after, you see the, how the, the urban area has increased. And here we have the, the Amatitlan Lake, so all the watershed going to the, to the lake. I don't know if you have the chance, but all this, this color is the, the urban area, and the lake is right here, so all this all this area coming to the to the lake. Let me show some other. The lake is right here, so all this area is going by gravity to the to the lake. And also, you, I would like to rem remark that here is a volcano. That before two days before the Agata storm uh, hit the the region, uh, we have an explosion. So we have the chance to, to, to have all this uh, sediment that, that the volcano erupted. So was, after the storm was washed out from the watershed and going to the lake. So we, we also took a core sample in order to, to see where is the, the sediment coming from the volcano erosion. Here is the lake just to see, and this is the urban area. Some of the data regarding with the precipitation and how this a little 
uh, increased during the years. And also to see that we have uh, really two, two seasons. One is that we call the rainy season, this between May to October, and then the dry season between November until the May next year. And this is the data for the daily uh, precipitation, the, the values. And you see we have for that event around two, 200 millimeters. And like Jose explained yesterday in the uh, Chagres River Basin, it, it, it was something like seven, 700, just to see the difference. And this is also the tendency of a, to have this uh, every year or the possibility to have a highest values. So with the battery metric uh, survey that we come up is that it was a previous uh, battery metric, it was in 2001. So we, when we did in 2012, we, we can estimate about, like we see we did brown color, that is about uh, 1.6 million ton of sediment per year because these are two different between 2001 and 2012. And this is an estimate of, of the, so you, you can predict how many years with this same chart uh, the, the lake is going to fill. Okay, let's see. Here is, you can see the, I don't know if you, right here, let me see. If, right here, this is where most of the sediment coming from this river the river is coming this way, and all this blue and then green is where all the sediment uh, go dispersed in, the, in that area. And you can compare with this uh, figure that with a previous study of Belles, they estimate that around 100 years take to, to have a 20 centimeters of sediment. In this case, between the two different uh, studies that, that was done between uh, 2001 to 2012, it was at 20 centimeters in a year. But in this case, because the storm, the, the, the amount of the load of sediment, it was increased by uh, two times. Like say, sediment rate double during the extreme climate uh, event. And this is what we uh, propose for the, for the uh, uh, we have it in, the, in Guatemala and the authority, uh, lake authority. So we propose this uh, strategy. And then one of the main, the main issues is especially to monitoring because this, uh, the reason that we did a, the bathymetric map, we, we have a chance to, yes. we have to chance to see what is the, the load in between uh, each year. With this information, we have to transform uh, to an information that have to be present to the decision maker in order to really uh, be aware of, of the problem and how to tackle. And then we have to enforce the law and the regulation that they already exist, okay? And then also it's very important to the capacity building that people that they are in the institution have to, to deal with. And then with, and finally it's really to have the, the measure that have to be taken in order to to mitigate or to add, add uh, to this problem. So basically, one of the, the very important is the vulnerability that have this lake that is very important for the people in Guatemala City, even with the, the reason that we are in the, like I say, in the continental divide, the water resources is, is uh, we don't have a lot of superficial water resources because we are in the, in the top. So the lake is a is a possibility to have like a resource 
for drinking purpose in Guatemala City. So if we have continue to have this uh, sediment rate, so we finally we are going we are we are not going to have the chance to, to use it. And also it's using for to generate energy, uh, hydroelectric energy, also for recreation. So they have a, a lot of uses that that can be we have to keep to maintain. This is some of the measures that, that have been taken, especially for the sandbank that they are used in the watershed. And you can see here how this has been exploited and with during the years, okay? And finally, how they have been uh, uh, implementing the, the measure in order to, to really try to avoid uh, to export sediment in this case. And this is another example. So, so like a conclusion is that we, we showed to the decision maker if we wanted to, to have this, uh, these are the two SNR, do nothing or continue to do what we are doing now or trying to implement the, the measure that we, we, we propose. And these are the, the key questions that we keep uh, discussing in Guatemala in order to, to try to find the, the solution to this problem. So these are the, some of the reference. And this, I would like to say, actually, uh, Michelle, that he, she was um, uh, with another people that we did this work in Guatemala. So thank you. <laughs>